Welcome to the demonstration of the groundwater flow model. My name is Sawyer Treese. I am a water conservation assistant for the city of Glendale. Um, in our previous video, we discussed some of the concepts that are occurring in the groundwater flow model. In this video, we're going to put them into action. So how do we get water in the first place? Where does this water come from? The answer is precipitation. Rain and snow are examples of precipitation. And to simulate this, I am going to pour this water into our groundwater flow model. Now that it has rained in our model, where is the groundwater? If you remember from our porosity experiment, the water is in the pore spaces between the sand and gravel particles. What about the water table? Where do you think that might be? Think about the words water and table, then look at the model to make a guess. The water table is the uppermost level of water in the aquifer where any pore space beneath it is filled with water. Right now, that spot is about right here. Do you think the water table can change? Yes, it absolutely can. This actually happens when we pump water from the ground using pumping wells. Pumping groundwater may look something like this. Do you see what is happening to the water table? The water table is lowering as we pump groundwater. And if we continue to pump this groundwater, you'll see that we could actually deplete this lake to the point where it has no more water at all. Pumping water from the ground without restoring it can cause irreparable damage to our aquifers, along with many other negative consequences. And on top of that, it doesn't help that we've been in a drought for 20 years at the time of this video. But there are ways that you can help. We can conserve or save water. Uh, some examples of that may be uh, turning off the faucet while you brush your teeth, um, shortening the time of your showers maybe to a song, and maybe reminding your parents to go and fix that leak they've been avoiding or to stop hosing down their driveway for some reason. Um, there are many ways that we can conserve water, uh, but at the same time, we have to consider the quality of our water. Do you think we can pollute our groundwater even though it's way far beneath us? The answer is yes, and we do so unintentionally sometimes. Uh, cars and trucks, they leak oil and gas. Litter finds its way into storm water. Pesticides can seep into the ground because remember, gravity is the earth always pulling everything towards its center. Um, and to demonstrate this pollution, I will add some food coloring into our groundwater model. In adding the food coloring to the groundwater flow model, we can see that this pollution is making its way into our groundwater by gravity. Now, notice what happens to the food coloring, our pollution, as I pump groundwater from the pumping well. Where is all of this pollution going? Yes, it's heading right towards where we are pumping. And guess what? That water we just pumped, we drink it. After it's gone through the water treatment plant, of course, but that costs a lot of energy and a lot of money. Thank you for watching this demonstration of the groundwater flow model. With that, you will have completed all three videos and hopefully now have a much better understanding of groundwater and why it is so important in a place like Arizona where water resources are so scarce.